Hello, this is Kenneth Wong, contributing editor for Desktop Engineering Magazine. The way we used to query and receive data about, say, sushi restaurants in our neighborhood looks like this. You get a list of names, addresses, and phone numbers. But is that really helpful? If you want to know, for instance, which one is the closest to public transportation, you'd have to look up train stations' locations, then plot them out on the map to correlate the two set up datas. Well, as you all know, you don't have to do that anymore because Google Maps and other digital mapping applications have solved that problem by giving you a way to display all your requested location data on a map. So, what if I tell you that some 3D design systems are doing the same? That's the topic of my article in April issue of Desktop Engineering Magazine. The article is titled, Visualizing the Forest of Data Beyond the Trees. Now, I know of very few people who get excited at the mention of data management. And that's understandable. After all, it's about sorting out part numbers, revisions, suppliers, and project statuses in rows of columns and bars in spreadsheets, or in spreadsheet-like interfaces. But if a 3D CAD program gives you a way to display your supply chain, project data, and revision data inside your assembly model in 3D, now you've got something that is similar to Google Maps, except that's for CAD. Take a look at this data mapping function in Autodesk Vault. Now, even though the information about file check-in, check-out, and change orders in progress are stored in Autodesk Vault, that's a data management system, you'll be able to use Autodesk Inventor, the company's mechanical modeling software, as the interface to explore, request, and retrieve the data that you need stored in different types of reports. Of course, you can still get the same information in a series of part numbers, names, and dates. But I think seeing it mapped out on a 3D assembly model gives you far better insights. It tells you something about the scale of the problem, for example. It also makes it easier for you to go directly to the subcomponent that has an issue, fix it if you're authorized to fix it, then update it immediately so that it gets updated in your data management system. Now let's have a look at another example, this one from Siemens PLM Software's Annex in what the company calls HD PLM. PLM stands for Product Lifecycle Management. Now you're working in the Annex assembly modeling environment, but you can still quickly identify which was changed and when it was changed based on the data that was stored in your Team Center data management platform. And if necessary, you can drill down and see more information about exactly which component and sub-assemblies have been worked on. Here, in this example, the yellow blades were updated yesterday. The transparent parts are old parts, presumably with no significant issues to address for the present. You can also use the same method to identify and isolate, for example, all the parts that came from a specific supplier, Big Dave's casting system here, for instance. And if needed, you separate them further by grouping them into those released to production and those still in progress. So will this become the norm rather than an exception? Will visual data management become the standard mode of operation? Will we eventually forsake spreadsheet-like interfaces in favor of 3D model-based data management? Well, I'm no Nostradamus, but I can tell you that ever since I started using digital maps like Google Maps, I've never really looked back on my printed phone book ever again. So until next time, this is mm. Kenneth Wong for Desktop Engineering Magazine, admitting that he is, after all, a visual creature.